She filmed the game. She interviewed the MVP of the game, Jimmy Becker. It was just outstanding. It was a great day, and the New York Bravest beat the finest, and it was just a great day. Take it away, Tracy Lynn Krauss. Thank you, Tommy. Hi, everybody. Good to be here as always. Yes, we were at the 38th annual FDNY NYPD hockey game this past Saturday at Nassau Coliseum. And Long Beach resident and New York Fire Department head coach Joe Byrne led his team to victory over the New York City Police Department by a final score of 6-5 to five in overtime. It was a hard-hitting game from the start, and I had a blast being there. Um, FDNY took an early lead. The police department would continue to battle back for the entire game. Uh, scoring went back and forth, and NYPD would tie the game at five on a power play goal with only 23 seconds remaining in regulation. It was then decided that should the overtime end of the tie, there would be the first ever in the history of this game shootout. But uh, firefighter Derek Kern, who scored the game winning goal with 22.6 seconds left in overtime, to secure the victory for the fire department. So, congratulations to FDNY for pulling out a victory over NYPD for the third consecutive year. Looking forward to next year's game. I had a blast, and I want to thank all of the players who gave me interviews. You guys were wonderful, and I look forward to seeing you around town. Uh, of course, tomorrow night the NHL playoffs begin, and the New York Rangers are going to be in their series against the Washington Capitals, and Detroit Phoenix are going to be featured on Versus. I'm going to give you my picks really quick for the first round. Some will surprise you, some may not. Okay, the number one seed in Washington Capitals in the Eastern Conference are playing the New York Rangers. Of course, the Rangers scraped in with the skin of their teeth to the playoffs, and uh, they are without Ryan Callahan, of course, but the defense will have their hands full with sniper Alex Ovechkin. The Capitals goalie Michael Neuberth is expected to start game one. He has a whole grand total of zero playoff games experience. Let's remember last year, Anthony Niemi won the uh, Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks, having no experience. But I have to go with the, the Rangers in six in the first round over Washington because they just have a uh, they just have better goaltending, better coaching, in my personal opinion. I'm going to glaze over a few of them. Philly, Buffalo, Flyers are without Pronger. Chris Pronger, world-class defenseman, he's skating again. Um, I can't see the uh, Sabres getting past here because they have to rely on a goaltender, only Flyers in five. Boston, Montreal, last time these teams met, not last time, the time before, uh, Boston defense Pichara plowed Max Pacioretty into the stanchions, giving him a concussion and a fractured vertebra. So these teams are, it's always interesting when these teams match up in the playoffs. I'm going with Boston in six. Uh, Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay, not much to say there, Pittsburgh without their superstars. It's a tough call. I'm going to go Tampa Bay in five. The Pens are really beaten up right now. Out West, Vancouver, Chicago, third year in a row these teams are matching up, first time in the second round. Chicago continually beats Vancouver in the playoffs. However, Chicago, they don't have the same team they had last year when they won the Stanley Cup. I'm taking Vancouver at seven on this one. San Jose, LA, San Jose breaks my heart all the time. They have much better goaltending now. They don't have Nabokov the anymore. They have Andy Niemi last year's uh, cup winning uh, goaltender. And I'm taking the Sharks in four over LA. LA's too young of a team. They are the youngest team in the playoffs. Nashville, Anaheim, honestly, I don't pay attention to either one of these teams. They're identical in numbers. I'm going Nashville in seven, goaltending again. Detroit, Phoenix, I am taking Phoenix in six, although Detroit typically owns them. And uh, the Flyers were my season one pick to make the finals out of the East, but right now I'm jumping on the Boston bandwagon. Right, <laughs> they have a designated contender, Tim Thomas. He's playing out of his mind. They're playing great. Tim Thomas is on top of his game, and they're relatively healthy out of the West. Uh, out of the risk of having my heart broken again by them, I'm taking the San Jose Sharks. I believe they can get it done this time, and that's the hockey spit with Tracy Lynn, and we'll have more players for you next Tuesday.
St. John's had the best year in the last eight years. They finished third in Big East play. They won 21 games and they made the, and they made the NCAA tournament. Real quick, halftime Howie, I know you went to a few games this year. What was your top moment at St. John's this year? Uh, definitely beating Duke, without a doubt. The great timing Monday, real quick. Top moment. Was it Pitt? Was it Duke? What was it? My top moment was meeting the greatest fan in the world, Eddie Digital, from St. John's. <laughs> okay, so we'll wrap things up. I was at the 50th anniversary of Tor Cap Epsilon at St. John's on campus, and the administration have been listening to the Halftime Howie Show, and they did ask me to present both the great Tommy Monday and, and Halftime Howie.